Metal Mule. Engineer it to be different. Sure, so I'm Matt, uh, this is Reese, and we're the first people to ever circumnavigate the globe on a scooter with a sidecar. So that's pretty much what we've done. We did 35 countries, 34,000 miles around the world on our red scooter and sidecar, it's a Honda SH300 outfit. Um, and we'd never driven a motorbike before we went. So. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so I guess what you just said, there's two reasons, I suppose. Uh, and they kind of both start from about five years ago when we started planning the trip. It's very sort of um, good nature, charity driven, if you like. So at the time we started planning it, there was a big sort of issue in terms of Calais migrant crisis and that sort of thing. And there was a lot of negative stories about the sort of migrants who were stuck there. And we kind of didn't really like the sound of some of these stories. And they were painting people in a negative light, so we kind of thought that can't be true. And a lot of these stories were spreading to people from different countries around the world, and we kind of thought that's also not true. So we decided, well, if we can circumnavigate the globe on the most stupid mode of transport we can possibly think, there's only one way we have to do it, and that's through the help and kindness of strangers. So that was the first one. Uh, the second one was that as we were sort of researching the Cali migrant crisis, we uh, discovered that essentially a lot of people were being targeted for human trafficking, and the human trafficking as we sort of did more research on it, we realised essentially it's where someone or people has been moved from one place to another um, place and being exploited for someone else's gain. Yeah. And quite often it's a gateway into a life of modern slavery, which is what we raised money for. So it was, it was very cause driven, the reason yeah. we did it. It was all about the cause. We weren't bikers, we weren't into um, travel majorly or anything like that. We always wanted to do something a bit crazy. And then we just heard about this issue. We didn't really like the stories in the press. We thought the world's a better place that's been painted. Let's go and show people the way we can do that is by taking this stupid vehicle yeah. around the world. Um, Exceptionally stupid. Yeah, vehicle. it probably started with too many of these actually, didn't it? In hindsight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah that's pretty much why. We'd always done like silly things growing up mm. um, for good causes, but nothing major, nothing no. like a big charity challenge. And we'd, like I said, we'd always wanted to do something crazy. We were just uh, sort of working normal jobs and we didn't have that much commitments and we kind of just thought this is the time to do that crazy thing we've been talking about our whole lives, let's go and do something. The, the idea that we were going to be the first people to ever do something really got me. Like, I thought that's kind of fun to be, the f even if it's something like... Extremely like driving, niche. Yeah, really niche. <laughs> no one like, would ever think yeah. of doing it. Or show, why yeah, not? exactly. Yeah. It's still the first time. And it was Guinness World Record too. Broke the Guinness World Record eight times over, which is cool. It's unofficial at the moment. We're getting there. Mm. A lot of evidence they need. But yeah, we did it. And it's, it's a fun thing to um, be able to say, really. We approached a variation of sidecar manufacturers in the UK um, and they always sort of a bit like, mm, I'm not so sure, you, you've got this idea and I can't see you doing it, Don't think so it's yeah. yeah. And we were sort of preaching, oh we're going to leave in three months and we still didn't have a sidecar. Um, so bizarrely, um, we, my stepmom banks, a uh, local bank close to us and one day this guy walked in and started chatting to her about it. And he was like, I used to build trial sidecars in the 60s. I'll have a chat with him if you like. Uh, and about a week later, we went to his, uh, his barn. Um, and within about 20 minutes, him and his brother were putting together plans to build us this scooter and sidecar. And yeah. essentially said to us, if you bring us this particular scooter, because that's the only one you're going to be able to do it on, we'll build it. Yeah. And that's pretty much how it happened. It was amazing. And they wouldn't let us give him any money for it or any money for the parts or anything. We tried to pay him at the end and he said, I'm just happy to see someone from your generation not sat and watching the telly. And he was like in his 70s or whatever. So amazing, love him, really good guys. And yeah. we didn't know him before, now they're part of the team. Yeah. Moaned at us for 15 months when we were killing it. Yeah, <laughs> whenever we got off road, they yeah. get really angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we went from London, South Africa first, yeah. so all the way down the east coast of Africa, and then up the Americas, Santiago to Vancouver, essentially, and then Vladivostok back to the UK, um, in winter though, so that was like minus 40 when we were going across Russia, which was really cool. It was extremely intense, yeah. yeah. It was, the whole thing was about 15 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's about 34,000 miles, like you mentioned, yeah, 35 countries, yeah. So it was good fun. Yeah. We have a, a very uh, a, a good policy for keeping the peace, yeah. um, which is essentially, um, I don't care when he's annoyed and he doesn't care when I'm annoyed. So yeah. <laughs> basically it's brilliant because, you know, I mean, at times, yeah, being a sat in a sidecar, you can be really annoyed with the guy driving and vice versa. But when you're like, I'm really annoyed with you, and they're like, I don't care. At all. There's absolutely no yeah. way you can go with that. <laughs> You've just got yeah. to get over it yourself. Yeah. yeah. So that was it, really. Yeah. We just had no respect for each other, and that works just as well as having a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be honest, uh, we the last one we did was obviously Russia, and that was so... We were so out of our depth yeah. um, to the point we couldn't believe it. Like, we, you know... 
obviously what we kind of found with most of the trip is that in, at times there were sort of really intense like difficult dangerous moments but you wouldn't realize they were dangerous until you'd done it and on reflection you were like blimey that was dangerous with russia we were halfway through siberia realizing blimey the last two weeks are dangerous and we've still got five weeks of exactly the same thing going forward yeah, yeah. and that just kind of by the time we made it home it was like I, I need a break from this. It's too late to get home. Yeah, yeah. It's right. It's yeah. Like, so when we, it was bizarre. Like both say that once we got home on a Sunday evening, I think it was, kind of sat down in our houses with a cup of tea and just kind of thought, "Blimey, that feels like a really long week." Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So it was. We were just genuinely like scared for our lives in mm. Russia, but not because people really think the roads, the ice roads, and we were on summer tyres and lorries, and it doesn't really equal very good. And uh, for a long time we were just actually scared and cold mm. <laughs> and yeah. then we got home and we were warm and safe we were like this is all right actually yeah. so but then we've had sort of six months back now and just getting back into kind of normal life both got jobs um but we both still do a lot of this kind of stuff trying to talk about the charities uh unseen uk and things like that and um, raising awareness of the cause mm. so, yeah sure so we wanted to um like we said about the the calais thing um in the issue that was affecting people involved in the migrant crisis in europe because that's what got us inspired to do it and the big thing was human trafficking so we wanted to focus on human trafficking and modern slavery um, we wanted to learn about it around the world, so we decided that we'd visit, we'd visit charities in countries that we went through. So we visited 10 en route, and they're the, they're the charities that we raise for. Uh, the one that we raise for in the UK is Unseen UK, um, and they run the UK's Modern Slavery Helpline. They're kind of like the UK's anti-slavery charity. Um, and yeah, really important because there's like 16,000 people living in the UK in slavery. Yeah. Um, and there's that mad fact that like, 70 or 80% of them are British. Um, it's not just people who have been trafficked into the UK, it's people who have been trafficked around the UK as well. So it is a really like hot topic mm. and a really big issue at the moment. I think what we took away from the whole trip in general was how easy it actually is to sort of end up in that life. So like when we were in Africa, for example, and we visited a charity in South Africa, they were saying that they get a lot of people who are trafficked from like uh, Central African countries and quite often they hear of like cases where like a, a teenager has been, I don't know, playing football on a random like a scout has come up and been like wow you are really really good at football you could go and play in south africa let's get you on a plane in south africa now i know for a fact when i was a teenager a man about football if someone told me i was really good and i can play in the south african league yeah i'd be going and obviously it's not that they just sold into a life of like domestic servitude or something like that so yeah. it's just extremely easy to sort of catch people out and yeah people don't realize it yeah yeah because they're uh, making a film yeah that was always our big thing is that we were going to make a film about yeah. it we filmed it pretty well reese's backgrounds in film so uh, well, yeah. you're next spielberg right there yeah so. yeah i am yeah <laughs> that's something like that <laughs> absolutely not no. <laughs> yeah yeah you're yeah. yeah. making know. a film yeah yeah, cool. yeah yeah and you're writing a book I'm writing a book. because yeah, you're um, quite the author. Oh, yeah, I'm worse than Smith, aren't <laughs> yeah. I? No, I mean, we started writing a load of articles to the mags and stuff. People started enjoying them, so mm. we thought, why not tell the mm. whole story? And so many things happened that we couldn't film because we were self-filming, mm. and not a lot, of, a lot of the time it was really hard to capture like the organic stuff that was going on. So a lot of crazy stories we didn't get on the camera, so it would be fun to sort of share them in a book. Yeah. So we're writing a film and doing a book, um, and then doing a lot of talks at events like this and things like that. And eventually we'll come up with another silly challenge i'm sure yes yeah. but we're not too sure it is yet so you can find us on facebook instagram youtube yeah. our website um yeah i mean we kind of refer to these days as the sidecar boys <laughs> yeah. or guys but our actual tag is as seen from the sidecar yeah i do actually prefer the sidecar the guy. sidecar guys <laughs> yeah but yeah so yeah as seen from the sidecar is yeah. where you'll find us and pretty much yeah find out more information on the trip yeah, the charity and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. as seen from the sidecar dot org. That's the one. Yeah. We'll keep up with any future mental yeah. things. Yes, it all. We will think there. of something stupid. I'm yeah, sure. there'll yeah. be something stupid eventually. <laughs> Metal Mule, engineered to be different.